يصنى الكل ويبقاه ليس الباقي إلا هو الله 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 ما لي رب إلا هو Yesterday we talked about the hadith of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the companion, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companion went to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when will Qiyamah come? And the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, what have you prepared for Qiyamah? And he said that I have nothing except for the love of Allah and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that you will be with whom you love. You will be with whom you no. love. And the companion who narrates this hadith as Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he says that there was no day more happier for us and for the companions in that moment, in that time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that you will be with whom you love. Yes. And he said, after mentioning this narration, how Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu, as I reminded you yesterday, he says <coughs> that I love, hence I love the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I love Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah and he said that I have hope that I will be with them even though my deeds are not equal to theirs right so this again talking about Qiyamah that Qiyamah will come but what is our preparation what is our preparation we should prepare with our amal but the most important thing what he said was that I love Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I truly love Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was a sign of His true devotion. Hence, Rasul Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, you will be with whom you love. In other words, this narration, like I said yesterday, is a sign for understanding and for those who have understanding that Iman is over Amal. Iman is above Amal. Only if your iman is strong, then your amal has any worth. If a person doesn't have good iman and strong iman, he can do what he wants, but the amal will not benefit him. Okay? So the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us by saying, by saying this to him and by him giving that answer and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirming what he said. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling us that what preparation do you have for Qayyamah? Make your iman strong. Strengthen your love for Allah and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everything will fall in thereafter. It doesn't mean just that and do nothing. To love Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it means you should follow what Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded. Alright? That's why the Quran says, Wa Allah, Wa Atu Rasul. Obey Allah and Obey Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, concerning the, the scholars have said, discussing this even further, that with regards to when Qiyamah will come and how long it will come and in which year it will come Almighty Allah only bless the knowledge of this to the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah knows this, I said this to you the day before that Allah Ta'ala is the knower of everything and Rasul Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the grace of Allah knows in other words Allah's ilm is zati that is Allah's divine knowledge unattained and what Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu has is what's atai, that which Allah gave Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not something that he had on his own. It's what Allah bestowed upon Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And through this knowledge, Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu also knows. And by the blessing of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he blessed some of his beloved servants, that they are aware of certain aspects of the coming of Qayyam. But when will it really come? Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now while I'm on this topic, very quickly, not discussing the Qayyamah, but something to think about, that when the beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, when we say Allah is Rasul knows, and to the blessing of Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu others know, some people turn around and say, that how does, uh, what can Rasul Ipaq see what happened? Because there's the hadith where Rasul Ipaq stood on the member and he said what will happen from the beginning to that. How does he know all this? Uh, how can he see that far? How can he see into the future? You know, this is only for Allah. Allah knows only. Only Allah is. That's why when we say that Wallahu Ta'ala Alam wa Rasul, when you say Allah and His Rasul no best, they get they start objecting. Wallahu Ta'ala wa Rasul Alam, Allah and His Rasul no they, they object. Why they say? Only Allah knows. Yes, Allah is the divine knower, but by His grace, Rasulullah also knows. 
and Rasul Pak, how far Rasul Pak can see into the future, what he knows, that is between him and his Rabb. Mm. But I'm going to give you one example of the topic right now on the Qiyamah, but just that it's come to my mind. Do you know when Musa Islam went to Mount Tur? You heard this before. When Musa Islam went to Mount Tur, then Musa Islam on Mount Tur, what did he do? He asked that he wished to see Allah. Okay, he wanted to see Allah's uh, divine radiance. Okay, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to him, "O oh Musa, you will never be able to see. You will never be able to see." Why this was unique? Muhammad Rasulullah but you will never be able to see, right? But Musa Islam insisted, he insisted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, I will unveil my one tajalli. You will not see me. You will see my tajalli, right? On the Mount of Tur. My manifestation. Manifestation of my jalwa on the Mount of Tur. So Musa Islam saw, what happened? He fell. In inverted commas, mm. unconscious. Mm. Alright, in human sense, mm. we will say, for understanding. Mm. He lost his normal sense. Mm. His falling unconscious was not like you falling unconscious and becoming unaware. Mm. His was because of the divine manifestation, the blessing of the divine manifestation from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Musa alayhi salam went into a deep state of absorption in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Okay? Now, we well, usually when a person becomes unconscious, <coughs> do they get anything out of it? Do they benefit anything? No. no. But Musa a.s. benefit completely. Subhanallah. Because what he asked for, that he couldn't get, but he benefited completely. Why? Because when he woke up, what was the strength of his eye? Subhanallah. How far could he see? How far could he see? Anybody remembers? How far could he see? Musa a.s. Could see for the distance of 30 miles. How many kilometers? I'm not 100% aware of that. Just mm. you can work the kilometers out. For a distance of 30 miles mm. on a dark night, not a moonlit night, mm. on a dark night, he could see for 30 miles a black ant on the peak of a mountain. Subhanallah. For a distance of 30 miles. Now, if that is the power of the eye of Musa a.s. Mm. and what he can see because of that one tajalli, then what can the beloved Rasul not see Allah. when he saw the great Allah. Allah. Okay, so Allah. he sees, and Allah says in the Quran, na, Ar-Rahman allama al-Quran. Allah taught his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this thing is not hidden from Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please keep this in mind. Okay? Now, going a little bit quickly, very further. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was commanded to keep this information concealed. As I said to you the other day from his Ummah, yeah. and as I said, it is in Tafsir Jalalain yeah. that Almighty Allah has blessed the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi with the knowledge of Jannat and Jahannam. Yeah. Okay? And all that which is in it. Yeah. But he commanded him to conceal and hide certain things, in that Muhammad's yeah. understanding, to conceal certain things and keep them as secrets. Yeah. In this regard, the narrations from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the basis of the author, I mentioned this to you earlier, I'm repeating yeah. the blessing. Thus, the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not inform any of his ummah about when Qiyamah will come in detail. Mm-hmm. About the exact thing. The beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi did not directly inform his ummah. Mm-hmm. In other words, where he stood up and he narrated something and everybody came to know about it. Mm-hmm. Okay? And for how and after how long it will come or in which year it will come, there are uh, great scholars who have said certain things. Mm-hmm. Like Sayyidina Shaykh Mahyuddin ibn Arabi radiallahu ta'ala. Sayyidina Ala Hazrat Adhim al-Barakat radiallahu ta'ala. But I'm not going to discuss that now. But the actual coming of Qiyamah. Yeah. Actual coming of Qayyam, this is in the knowledge of Allah and His beloved Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did inform something. He informed his Ummah about the month, about the day, and the date when Qayyam will come. <coughs> he didn't say when it will come, <coughs> but he told us about the month, he told us about the day, and he told us about the date. <coughs> in fact, even our children, <coughs> people will say that, what in my head? Even our children know. That Qiyamah will come on the 10th of Muharram. Yeah. And it will be a Friday. Yeah. That even the children know. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. when our children know this much, yeah. what can you say about Muhammad yeah. Rasulullah? Yeah. This is what you were meant to know. Yeah. Okay? This is what you were meant to know. Okay? Yeah. So it is said that Qiyamah will come on the 10th day of Muharram, according to the scholars. It will be on a Friday. Yeah. And what time? Between the time of Zohar and Asar. 
between the time of Zohar and Asr. Asr. Most of the narrations say between the time of Zohar and Asr. Asr. Okay, in other words, between the time of Jumu'ah and Asr in that time, between the time of Zohar and Asr. That is when Qiyamah will come. And the scholars have said that after the passing of Sayyidina Isa al Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam, when that sweet, fragrant breeze will blow, when that sweet, fragrant breeze will blow, by causing all the believer's souls to be easily removed, then only unbelievers, unbelievable, un- unbelievers will be left in the dunya. Only unbelievers will be left in dunya. After this, an era of 40 years will go by. After this, an era of 40 years will pass over them, wherein none will have any children, and none will be less than 40 years of age. It is upon them that Qiyamah The actual Qiyamah will come upon the Kufar, the true believers will go away before that. Now, while I'm on the topic, I'm stopping there. We'll talk about the rest, inshallah, Razim, later. Now, one important point. Ismail Delhi, one of the head and the leaders of the Bad Mazhabs. Okay, the Bewandi Wahhabi. What he writes in his book, Tafuya Tuliman, the name is Tafuya Tuliman, or Mashaq said Tafuya Tuliman. Not one which strengthens your iman, one which weakens the iman. Okay, or harms the iman. What did he say? He gives this narration about Qiyamat and how the sweet breeze will blow. What did he say? He says, So wo hawa chal He says, And that breeze has passed. What did he say? That breeze that will pass and all the Muslims will pass away. He says, So that breeze has passed. So if that breeze has passed according to him, are there any Muslims left? <laughs> Can you say ignorance? Okay. If the breeze blew, are there any Muslims left? No. And he claims to be a Muslim. So what is he if the breeze has blown over? Do you understand how and what happens to them? So keep this in mind. These are things that they've written. That is why I always remember while I'm on the topic, we don't have Jagra with the Wahhabis and Dewandis because they don't read Salami and don't make Fatiha. Okay? They don't want to read Salami, bad luck. They don't want to read Fatiha, then Nuksan. The jagra is because of Iman and Akira. Yeah. What belief system they have that is contrary to the belief system commanded by Allah and the Lord of the Lord. And I discussed this many long time ago when we were teaching Bahari Shri at the first volume. Yeah. So keep this in your mind. But from this now will stem the major signs of Qiyamah and the issues of Iman and such.